It's recording right now? Yeah. Okay, here's the deal, okay, guys? Okay? Aunt May is gonna die in Spider-Man No Way Home, okay? She's gonna get killed by Green Goblin. Mark my words, Gobby himself is gonna kill her. And when she's dying, she's gonna say, with great power comes great responsibility. That's my, that's my Spider-Man prediction. I'm gonna put that at the very beginning of the episode. <laughs> this, this Hot is... off Pat's presses. Hot off Pat's presses. Editor's note. We recorded this episode before No Way Home came out, so both of us had not seen No Way Home at, when Pat said that prediction. So, yeah, I'm not going to spoil anything about his prediction, because I know a lot of people still haven't seen it yet. So, yeah, just keep that in mind. No, we, we still didn't watch the movie yet, because it wasn't out yet. Alright, enjoy the episode. Hello and welcome to the 11th episode of Fresh Off The Reel. My name is Lib. My name is TV show watching Pat. Pat's been watching a TV show. That's why today we're not talking about a movie. What? That's weird. Series, yeah, series first. So we're not just movie podcasts. We're also going to try at least to do some TV shows or mini series or things like that. And today... We're starting with WandaVision, the first MCU TV show that's, like, specifically MCU canon. Because, of course, there were shows before this, like Daredevil. One day, we're going to talk about Daredevil, even if it kills me. It might actually kill him. It, it might actually. Fucking Matt Murdock's going to come, like, the, the blind man's going to go kill the deaf man. You, he won't see you coming, and he, you won't hear him coming. <laughs> He is the, the, the perfect adversary for me. <laughs> uh, together we make what? one crippled man. You know what? If anyone would beat me up in an alleyway, I'd let it be Charlie Cox. <laughs> but he's not in this show. No, he's not. And this also is a Netflix show. This was the first premiere Disney Plus original, I believe. Or at least the first non-Disney related one. I think the High School Musical... TV show came out first. And they, they did other things before that because Disney Plus was up for like a year or two, I believe, before WandaVision started. But this was their first, like, f not them, not Disney owned, or not Disney created big budget show for Disney Plus. Mm -hmm. um, WandaVision, for the MCU, as Lip said. And this is the first in their line of never ending TV shows that they won't expect general audiences to watch to understand future Avengers movies. And that's a conversation for a different time. Well, anyways, <laughs> let's talk cinema. Well, it's technically not cinema, but I'm going to say that anyways. Let's, let's talk streaming services. It doesn't roll off the tongue as well. No, it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> hey, guys. It's Future Lib. <laughs> and Future Behind Pat. the scenes at the Fresh Off the Real podcast. Whoa. So we're here to tell you that we sound different. And... We just finished recording the episode and we completely forgot to mention that we're still working out the kinks on Pat's, Pat's new mic and my new audio mixer. So he might sound different, I might sound different than I did in the last episode, and we might sound different than we're going to sound in the next episode. So this is just a little warning that if the audio is bad, we're probably going to fix it. <laughs> you should say something. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're gonna have to bear with us for a little while longer. <laughs> Hopefully, within the next couple of episodes, we'll have all these audio settings sorted out, and you can get the best experience possible. Um, so until until then, just please bear with us. Enjoy the rest of the episode. See you there. Anyways, so do you want to read the letterbox description for Wandavision? This, yeah, the sure. The description of it is gonna be a little different because it's a tv show so it's it's not just like every episode they do tie together but it doesn't flow in the same way a movie does and um how we're going to talk about it is also going to be a little different than how we talk about movies just because of the nature of how this is presented to the audience mm -hmm. so um this is our first tv show hopefully we have figured it out somewhat but this might be a little messier than our usual stuff we will try so here is the uh Pretty vague description of WandaVision, a 2021 miniseries directed by Matt Shackman. 
Wanda Maximoff and Vision, two superpowered beings living idealized suburban lives, begin to suspect that everything is not as it seems. I think that yeah, that's that's damn accurate. That's that's Honestly, pretty a- that's pretty accurate, except for it's, it's saying that Wanda thinks it's not as it seems. Wanda knows exactly what's going on. Well, Wanda's protecting, right? I I think I think um, the vagueness of that description fits this kind of show perfectly, because it is kind of pieced together in the same way a mystery is, mm-hmm. except um, we're told up front that things aren't as it se- they seem. But uh, the um, the mystery spoilers <laughs> is that uh, Wanda also knows, and it's all her fault. But we'll get into that when we get there. I I think it's a cool um cool play on the traditional mystery, and it's also not something the MCU has ever done before. At least not like in this way. Uh, it's cool. Like like like, uh, Far From Home kind of deals with with a mystery at least a little bit, and uh, they deal with it one way. This one does it a bit differently. I think it's kind of cool. Um, in fact, this one has several mysteries woven in there, and it's cool. So, in my opinion, uh, the first three episodes, like, it's like the first three episodes and the fifth episode are, like, top-tier MCU for me. I agree. That's um, the, you, want, you want to just give your overall series review uh, score first, and then we can get into this? Yeah, so... My overall review for the whole series is 4 out of 5. I really enjoyed it. Pretty good. That's all I have to say. <laughs> yeah, my, my overall review is a 3 to a 3.5 out of 5, but with an asterisk. Because like Lib said, I, I, I agree with him. I think the first three episodes are fantastic. And if, if the whole show was as good as those first three, four episodes, it would be a 4. But because of issues that I'll get into later, I I can't give it that four. <laughs> so it so it kind of wavers between a three and a three and a half for me, because I really want to love it more than I I do. You want to talk about uh, why those first three episodes are, are amazing? So the first three episodes are purely just Wanda and Vision, basically the, them, and then there's this other character named Agnes. Yes, she's a reoccurring character. So. The way this show works is for the first three episodes uh, and, and for, I think, the, whole, the, the rest of the show uh, when they're in the TV world. So there's a TV world and then there's the real world. In the TV world, in the first episodes, black and white, it's like Dick Van Dyke, Bewitched, something like that. The first episode is, is, is Dick Van Dyke. Bewitched is episode three. Okay, Bewitched is episode three. Right, and then so, and then the second one, still black and white, but then they it's, they go uh, up a decade. Yeah, it's I love Lucy. So like like the, so it goes from the fifties, the sixties, and then the seventies. The the way the show works is that they're basically parodying different eras of like family sitcoms for each episode, and and this is true for the the whole show, bar the last two episodes, which stay within the same era, and have like. Um, time things that we'll talk about later. But yeah, the whole show is basically um, them just referencing eras of TV until the mystery is revealed. And there'll be like, little like dips of like doubt in each episode that make you question what's actually happening. And like Lib said, there's like the real world where that's where it, that takes place in the modern MCU era where they're also piecing things together. But um, the core of the show is, is built on them referencing TV. And each episode has its own uh, artistic flair that I think really shines in the first three episodes. Yeah, and in case you're wondering, uh, this takes place after Endgame. Uh, yeah, I guess we should like throw that out there. Spoilers for uh, Infinity War. Uh, yeah, spo- spoilers for Infinity War, Endgame, WandaVision, of course, Captain America Civil War. That's it, right? Yeah. Like, just, just to like, briefly like just get you up to speed. Because you, you do need to have seen those movies, especially if you were Endgame, to, to understand this show. Uh, the show picks off after Endgame, and Vision is killed in... Infinity War. Infinity War, because Thanos takes the Mind Stone. And so Vision's dead, and Wanda is pissed, for lack of a better word. Um, Wanda is pissed. She develops a romantic relationship with Vision. 
They're supposed to in get Civil they, War. they did get married, right? Yeah. 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 They 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 have this relationship in Civil War and um, and Infinity War. Obviously things don't go well for that couple. <laughs> so um that leads us to the start of this series, but like before the events of episode one, um, where like Wanda Wanda visits this small town that reminds her of her childhood and she puts everybody in a trance and she brings vision well fake vision back to life and she's just living an idealized life going through different eras of TV sitcoms because that's what makes her happy. Yeah, because when she was a, when she was a kid, they, she used to watch sitcoms with her family. Yeah, while well, like everything was blowing up outside, <laughs> she was yeah. watching sitcoms with her brother, who's also dead. Spoilers for Avengers too. Oh, that's yeah. a twist that comes up later. Um, oh yeah, yeah. That, <laughs> it's a funny twist so all, that comes yeah, up later. Yeah, so all that happens um, immediately before episode one, and in episode one, we're just thrown into uh, the Dick Van Dyke show, but starring Wanda, Wanda and Vision. Vision. Yeah. Jinx. <laughs> I was gonna say the actors' names, but I, I completely blank blanked on Paul. Be- I blanked on Paul Bettany for a second. <laughs> Elizabeth Olsen and Paul Bettany. Yeah. Also, to uh, throw it out there, uh, this is just personal favors, but Vision is my favorite MCU character. Don't know why he just is. I love I Vision. Like um, Paul Bettany in the role. I think he's great. Vision's fun. I I like um. Elizabeth Olsen as Wanda a lot as well. I think she's really, especially in her first like two movies, she's really under underdeveloped, undercooked. Yeah, she needed the show. But um, she needed the show, and 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 um, she she greatly benefits from having it. I honestly like she she's like throws up the list for me with this show. Remember, uh, remember in Age of Ultron when she had a really shitty Russian accent. <laughs> Yeah, that really shitty accent that they, they kept up with all the movies, but they did they just like slowly ease on it until this show where there's a joke where she speaks with just an American accent and it's really funny. <laughs> she's just she's just American now. <laughs> um yep. in the first episode, there's like no like until near the end of the episode, there's just no hints of there and being any foul play here. It just looks like a black and white sitcom starring yeah. Wanda and Vision. Uh, like, had you not seen any of the promo material and you just watched up, you just went into episode one and just watched it, you're probably gonna believe that it's just uh, a Dick Van Dyke reference. Like they, they really they they play it super like safe. Um, it's just the Dick Van Dyke reference, and it's so fun. Yeah, the, the costumes are great. They really capture that era perfectly. The first three episodes of this are just super fun and charming because they just have fun with it. See, uh, just here's a fun fun fact. This is only applicable to the first episode where they did this. It like the the name of the first episode is called "Filmed in Front of the Film Before a Live Studio Audience." This this episode was actually filmed in front of a studio audience, like for like for real. The laugh tracks are from the live audience in this episode. Of course, they they all the effects and everything they used digital effects like in post, just like they did on old TV shows like Dick Van Dyke. But you know the scenes where like Wanda's in the kitchen, all the stuff is flying around her. Yeah, they actually use. Yeah, the, they actually use like you could see the strings. Like, <laughs> yeah. and it it's really charming, and I think that's something the show benefits from a lot. Is it's just really charming. The, the character interactions are really charming. The way they encapsulate that style is really charming. It's just it's just a fun, feel good show for that first couple episodes. Yeah. So the the first episode is just it's just an episode of a sitcom until Wanda. Yeah, the very the very yeah end. until the very end where Wanda and Vision are they're having uh, dinner with with uh, Vision's boss and the boss's wife. And st- was, was and played by um, Kitty from that seventy show. Kitty from that seventy show. <laughs> yeah, you know that seventy show. <laughs> yeah. That's like my. That's legit. Probably my favorite TV show ever is that seventy show. I, it's 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 one of my favorite sitcoms. I love that seventy show. The, seeing her was such a surprise. I was like, oh my god, it's Kitty. I didn't know. I didn't even know she still acted. I don't know her name. <laughs> I don't think she she does serious roles anymore. Or like like big roles anymore. I think she just does stuff like this. Um, we, we didn't get we it would have been funny we didn't we didn't they already had a show for the 90s right so they weren't gonna do 
that seventies when they got to the nineties. Yeah, but it would have been cool if they if they did that seventies and then they brought her. Yeah, they they like they that. did they did full house for the nineties episode, right? Is it, I believe so. Because I I know for the two thousand episode that's obviously Modern Family, but yeah, and and another thing that the. the as the years go by, they actually—I think—I don't think they actually used cameras from that era, but the aspect ratio is different in every episode. Like even in the, in the in the second to last episode, there's only there's nine episodes. So in episode eight, wait, where, the, the is the the reveal for Agatha is in seven or eight? In seven, isn't it? It's at the end of it's seven. It's in seven. Yeah. So episode seven, that's Modern Family. It's filmed in. 16 by 9, just like every other TV show. But then as soon as we're pulled out of the... Like, in all the episodes, as soon as we're pulled out of the TV world, it's back to the cinematic 1 by 33. And they, they, did, they did reference the, the big shows. So when, when the boss and the boss's wife, they're eating dinner at the table, shit gets weird. Because the, yeah, the boss starts choking on food. And then, yeah. and then the camera starts panning in a very modern way, not in like the the the, the show, like like in like in Dick Van Dyke, like they would in the sixties. This is where the show caught my attention, and that, that that this is probably my my favorite thing when I'm watching movies. I love being confused. I love being confused. I love Inception. I love when I have. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? Yeah, and what I like a lot about episode ones is um, Wanda doesn't know what's going on either, and, and like obviously, like it's revealed later that she she's behind it and she is aware of what's happening, but in the moment she's just as confused as the audience is, and it really does well to um, to play with that mystery, and it's just really cool. I wish the whole show was this good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I really wish the the whole show was just stuff like that, like. Ah, oh, it it would have been it would have been one of the best shows I've ever seen. <laughs> yeah, and they said that like you were saying that the boss is choking and no one's helping him, yeah. and then eventually things things like snap back to to normal and he's helped and then and everything is fine. And when the episode ends, it ends normally. It, like, it ends normally, but then when you watch the credits, you kind of get more pieces to that puzzle where like the the fuzzy TV. Like screen from that era is like the credits background, and the TV closes. Like it's like that's where you get to start little, little, like piecing things together. It's really cool. Uh, and and that that's a theme with the with the, the first three episodes. So the first two episodes are in black and white. At the very end of the second episode, Wanda like she's like, uh, oh, snaps her fingers, and now the whole episode's in color. And then for the rest of the show, yeah, it's, it's all in it's, color. And it's funny because that episode, uh, episode three, is when go to color it's called now in color yeah and she also she and this is a big thing uh in episode two at the, the end of episode two one that gets pregnant randomly out of nowhere vision's yeah, a robot stomach. yeah her well, i mean <laughs> vision in this reality is not her, oh he is a robot right no he's no vision in this reality is still a robot he's still a synthesoid yeah but yeah her stomach just grows like she sees another pregnant character and then her stomach just baby yeah so that that's another thing that you're like what Huh? And then all of a sudden, because the, these episodes, the, the, the TV shows they're referencing are, they're, they're split up by decades, but the act, in, in the actual timeline, they're only one day apart from each other. That's why, and then Vision starts getting, he starts getting ideas because he's wondering, my, my wife's only been pregnant for two days and now she's in labor. What the fuck is going on? <laughs> yeah. Vision becomes very self-aware very very quickly in the show. And I, I feel like when Vision starts getting self-aware, like in episode 5 and episode 6, that's when it starts getting pretty pretty good. And then they drop it because yep. they switch back to the real world. And I hate yeah. the real world in this mo in the, not movie, in this TV show. What like with him saying that, like they do cut back to the real world as if episode two onward that's when they start coming back no, episode to, three episode three onward uh, episode three sorry episode three onward is when they basically coming back to the real world that's when the people in their real world are first made aware of like oh something something's happening you know yeah and that's when characters like like jimmy woo everyone's favorite mcu character is introduced 
And also, and, um, um, Darcy from the first Thor movie. Remember her? She's in, she's in Thor 2, I think. I, yeah, like oh yeah, play. she is also in Thor 2. Remember her? She's here now. And also, Monica. Who is she? Yeah. Who knows? I, it's, it's weird, because um, I really wanted to, for them to reference uh, Two Broke Girls. Because they, they, bro- they, uh, they brought her in. I'm trying to remember the actor's name. Cat Dennings. Cat Dennings. They brought Cat Dennings in. And when they got to like the 90s, I would have really hoped or like the 80s. When did Two Broke Girls come out? Two Broke Girls? That's like early 2000s. Oh, it's, it's late. It's, it's what? 2011. It's 2011. 2011? Um, if I yeah, feel, well, I, that makes me feel they, old. They, they did Modern Family and The Office for, for that era, but I think it would have been interesting. So like later in the show... Uh, Darcy is brought into the um, the TV world, the, the fake reality that Wanda made. Westview, that's what it's called. She's brought into Westview, and I thought they would have done something interesting. Like it would have been cool if, just as a reference, uh, Darcy was a a like uh, a diner employee or something wearing the yellow outfit. It would have been a cool reference, but they they didn't go through with it. A little disappointing because I love Kat Dennings. Yeah, I re- I really like her too. She's a she's a really good actress. And and Two Broke Girls is is a a fantastic show, but they don't really use um, Cat Dennings for much here, unfortunately. Uh, but it is what it is. <laughs> Ep- episode three is when they really get heavy into that. That's when the government is trying to. That's four. That's episode four. Right. Sorry. Yeah. I watched the show today. If it was, then I'm, I'm still. Not <laughs> yeah. Um, for those watching, I literally. I, I mean, I, I saw the show as it was airing, but I, I marathon the show again. I started last night and I finished today. And it goes to show how much I remember. Yeah, so episode four doesn't even have Wanda and Vision uh, in the episode. Episode four is just the government people and, and what's her name? Michelle? I literally just said her name and I forgot it already. Monica. And Monica Monica's the girl from uh, Captain Marvel, right? Uh, no, no, that's someone else. No, no, that's someone else. Well, no, no, no. She, it is... Oh, yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. It is. Isn't, isn't she the? She's. She was. Not, a, she was a teen. She was a. She was a kid in. Uh, in. Um, in my, Captain Marvel, she's a kid. Yeah, yeah in Captain she's Marvel, she's a kid. Yeah. This is the adult version. This is her. Yeah. Yeah, and and she's, yeah, she's going to be in the Marvels. Yep, this is important because she gets powers and will be in the Marvels. <laughs> yeah, she gets powers here. Whoa. Yeah. She. Yeah. The, the way it's weird the way she gets her powers. She just walks through the barrier. That's how she gets her powers. Yeah, I feel like she's a. Okay, so, like, what I was thinking was going to happen when the show was airing. So, like, this this, this came out way post-Disney buying Fox, right? hmm And we're all just, we're waiting for the X-Men to be in the MCU, right? Like, we all know what's coming. <laughs> it's just a question of how. And, and I really thought that Wanda doing this to Westview, because, so, like, again, more spoilers for later. We're jumping around. Westview is a real town. And all the people living in Westview are real people. They're just under 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 Wanda's mind control. Yeah. And the way um Monica gets her powers, I thought, that, oh, maybe Wanda doing this to the residents of Westview is gonna turn them into mutants. But that's not what happens. <laughs> so that theory was busted. Oh well. So then in episode five, we return back to the TV show formula, but now. From here onward, they switch between the real world and the TV world, and that's the thing that people hate about this show, and that's also that's the I thing that I hate about this show. <laughs> this is also the um, going forward. Episode five onward is like Vision is one hundred percent aware that something is happening, and he's trying to figure it out. And Wanda is also a lot more. Um, I'm not gonna say villainous. She is the villain of the show, but she's more. Um, She's less subtle about something being hidden, right? Yeah. She's more ang- she's more angry for the rest of the show. She's a lot more secretive, a lot more manipulative with Vision. Um, and in episode five, um, that's where the that trailer shot of them flying, looking like they're going to start a fight. Um, that's where the, episode five is where that happens. And it's the full house episode. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They got they got, they got kiddos. <laughs> it's full house. Oh no no no! Yeah, I think you might be thinking of episode six because in episode five they're still wee little babies. 
Well, they got, well, they got, they got, they have kiddos. Oh yeah. Uh, another weird thing in episode five is at the beginning of episode five, their kids are babies, but then at the end, they're already teenagers. So yeah, well, the, something's they're, they're, going they're on. They're, they're, they're young kids. Okay, well yeah, they're like ten. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and I, I like the the set like they chose full. I mean, you have to choose Full House for the eighties and nineties, right? Yeah, but um, it's just funny because Full House is where. Elizabeth Olsen's sisters started, and now Elizabeth Olsen is referencing that show, so it's cute. Yeah, that's pretty funny. And then in episode six is the Halloween one. Now, this is where... Wait, wait, wait. Before, where... Before, before we get to that, something interesting happens at the end of episode five. Oh, right, right, right. Which, which further fueled my mutants theory. <laughs> Go ahead. So, so as um, Vision and, and Wanda's argument is heating up, we get a we get a special visitor. <laughs> and, it's, and it's something that uh, a lot of the sitcoms of this era did a lot, where like the ep- an episode would end with a surprise cameo yep. from a character everyone knows and loves. And that's how the episode ends. You gotta, gotta wait for that cliffhanger. Well, they do this one, and it's Evan Peters Quicksilver. Not not the MC one. So in, in uh, Age of Ultron... So there's the MCU Quicksilver, he dies in the end. Wanda's kind of still mourning because Wanda has no idea how to deal with loss and that's why she's doing all this TV show thing. Pietro, uh, Quicksilver, whatever you want to call him, comes to the door. But it's not the MCU one. (laughs) It's uh, it's Evan Peters. It's it's the Quicksilver from the Fox X-Men universe. It was played off as a joke. Yeah, it's played off as a joke. Like uh, Cat Dennings is like, oh, they they recast Pietro, and, yeah. and I I think that that was the moment where I think everyone got like really excited for what's going on, for what's about to happen, because you you bring in Quicksilver from a different universe, right? Yeah. So, are, is it time? Are we? Because for those who don't know, I th- I think it's pretty common knowledge at this point. But outside of the MCU, Wanda and Pietro are are mutants. They're not in the MCU because of legal reasons, but but before now. Outside the MCU, uh, they were they're supposed to be mutants, and this was like the first taste of mutants in the MCU. So we we get that that like surprise cameo at the end, and then like the next episode is called. Um... Oh, oh no, episode... sorry, on, the no, episode five is called on a very special episode. Someone returns. That's the joke. Yeah, it and... ends with him coming, and then and then like for the next, I think he's in the next two episodes. He's in the rest of the show, but the next two episodes he has like a major role. Evan Peters is just Pietro. He has his speed, and he's yeah. cool. But and there's and they do they do nothing else with that. Yeah, and he he acts just like Quicksilver does in the Fox universe, not like the one in the MCU. Uh, he's just like the funny uncle, and nobody questions him. Nobody questions him. Wanda is confused because you know she's controlling all this world. If she would have projected a, a another Pietro, it would have been the MCU one. But now there's a different one, and she doesn't recognize yeah. him. So that so, so there's so, another hint of something yeah. else might be going there, on. There's here. her first hint that something is going on with her, but then she quickly just accepts him, and because she's happy to have her brother back and, and her kids get an uncle. So and then like the sitcomy stuff continues. And for two for two episodes, we get we get the. Episode six, the Halloween episode, which is very, very blatantly a Malkin in the middle <laughs> yeah, reference. Yeah, which and, and also uh, 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 just just as a fun reference, Vision and Wanda are wearing their comic book costumes in this episode. Yeah, same for Quicksilver. Yeah, and Quicksilver, it's and, pretty uh, funny. and one of the kids, the, the fat, the kid who gets speed as his power, uh, he's also dressed up as comic book Quicksilver, and it's really funny. It's really funny because you you realize how shitty Vision's comic book costume is. <laughs> Don't you dare talk shit about my comic book costumes <laughs> out there, you. <laughs> so there's a character we've been neglecting to talk about. So she's gonna she's gonna become super important after this episode. So in all of these sitcoms, there's always the nosy neighbor, the best friend. You know what I mean? There's always like, and and, sh- and she's not in every episode. They're just reoccurring. So that's Catherine Hahn's uh, character. She plays Agatha, uh, or or a- Agnes. Agnes. She becomes Agatha. Uh, but that that's what she is in the real world. So Agnes is the re- recurring character in all these episodes. The the best friend, the nosy neighbor, and she keeps making jokes about her husband and how shitty of a husband he is. 
That never goes anywhere, but I love those jokes. <laughs> oh, yeah, well, it, it's literally also just, just playing on that nosy neighbor thing. Her, yeah. husband, her husband's always shitty. It's always, it, like, it, it, it's, it's a trope that just doesn't exist in shows anymore. But I, like, I, I, I'm, I, I like that. I like that about her character. I really love Catherine Hahn. She plays really, 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 really good villains. <laughs> she, I think I haven't seen a single thing where she doesn't play a villain. Like the it, typecast, I, huh? She's typecasted. She always plays villains. Yeah, she always plays villains. She's also a uh, Olivia Octavius in Spider Verse. So there you go. Yep. It, it's weird how that worked out. Like um, Haley Steinfeld is is also Gwen in Spider Verse. She's She's a Hawkeye. She's Kate Bishop. Yeah. So, hmm, hmm, big hmm there. So now, now we have things that are happening that are outside of Wanda's control, and I think they could have gone a different direction with that. I think it, they could have made it a lot better with the mystery. Like the the mystery's still there, but it, from the very first episode, you could kind of have an idea that something's wrong with Agnes. <laughs> Yeah, they're they're not subtle about the fact that she's. Um, you should be suspicious of her. Like like even even um, Wanda is pretty suspicious of her from the beginning. Like it, it's played for jokes earlier on, but it it doesn't lead to a good twist, and I don't I don't like the direction the show took after that point. I, I I'm also like firmly on the f- the side that I I think Wanda should have just been a straight up villain. Not yeah. just, I mean, she still is. Like, I'm not, like, her, her actions are never justified. She's still, she's still, like, at the end of the show, she still fucked these people over. And, and she's still treated like a villain. But I don't like that there's this outside influence who is also pulling strings behind the scenes. I wish it was just Wanda dealing with grief in a very bad way. And she had to learn how to deal with grief, you know? Yeah, and the, and then, then, with... Agnes coming in, someone that's not in her control and she doesn't recognize and all that stuff. That could have been cool. Yeah, but they don't, they don't really do anything interesting with it, unfortunately. So at the same time, so. at the same time all this is happening, we keep cutting back and forth to the, to the real world, where there's, there's this government guy and he keeps saying just nuke the city. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah, literally, literally his plan is just kill them. Like, like well, we could rebuild. <laughs> we can, we can re- and then everyone's like but there's other yeah. people there and he's like I don't fucking care this is yeah and like throughout the entire show the government is sending like like spy like little spy planes or drones or soldiers in but they keep getting taken over by the spell and uh, one one thing that is really cool uh, they send th- this is in the first three episodes I think it's in the second episode where it's still in black and white the government sends in a drone, but we don't know the government is a factor in the show yet. Yeah, yeah. The, the, our first hint at that is they send in a a drone that is disguised as a a plane. A yeah, it's dis- it's disguised plane. as like a toy helicopter or something. Yeah, but, but it's in color. Yeah, it's, it's, it's in it's, color. It is a helicopter. It's in color. Yeah, and then and, the, and then that's... also in in the same scene, I think there's like this guy that's just sweeping the streets watching Wanda. Like oh the, first, like two, the, the first, first three episodes are so good. <laughs> yeah, and I think the show's good up until like six. I think is when I I start to lose interest. Yeah, I start I started to lose interest at six. Uh, take away four. So like my the good episodes are one two three four five six. I mean one two three five six, not four. I real I really really wanted them to just like stop with the back and forth shit. It really took you out of the moment. It was it was really jarring just switching between the TV world and the real world. I mean, it's it's not like you couldn't tell which was which. You they, it, that that's not the problem. The problem was the real world stuff was so uninteresting and it went nowhere. The only reason it's there is so that Darcy, Darcy and the rest of the of the government can try to piece together the mystery. But I think the thing that takes us out of it is we're watching them try to piece together with mi- the mystery when the show Instead should have been together. yeah the show should have been trying to make us piece together the mystery. And it, the government also just exists as a kind of shitty villain. Like the army dude doesn't really have any motivation to do what he's doing. 
Aside from just wanting to kill Wanda for no reason, really. And it's revealed later that, like, he has Vision's body, like, the original Vision's body. And he built a murder machine, basically, like, to, to do the American government's bidding, I guess. Yeah, the, really the white vision. Well, like, he just doesn't work as a villain. I don't find him at all interesting. He's just a generic army dude, and it's, like, kind of dull. It's like it's like the, uh, it was it was like the villain in um in the first Iron Man movie was it yeah, he's like but I but I, but I like um Iron Monger. he was fun like at, at least he had like interesting like an interesting dynamic with Tony where I was like this army dude has nothing with anybody <laughs> his his employees were Wanda and Vision she just like it just just dull it doesn't it it, it didn't make any sense but yeah the, the 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 whole thing about the real world uh that. They're like making, they're remaking Vision as like a war machine, not like war machine, but as a war machine. God, the MCU is really fucking <laughs> annoying. Well, as a weapon, you could you could just say as a, a weapon. weapon. Yeah, I don't know why I said war machine. So they're using yeah. this white Vision. He's like a purely white Vision as a weapon mm-hmm. because the Vision that exists in the TV world is not real. He's not a real Vision. Yeah, you could say he and is that- a Vision. Huh? <laughs> and, and like he basically exists like the white vision is just so that they could use vision more in the in the future. And maybe to lead the young Avengers or whatever. But um they you know didn't what? want to keep vision dead, so they had to do this. You know what I'm excited for? Because that that vision has the previous vision's memories, right? Or does it not? He does, yes. He does? Okay, good. I really, really want Wanda and vision to have like a big climactic showdown in one of the in one of the next movies that's probably going to happen i i'm just i'm really I, curious I, to see how that would like what would happen there probably want probably knowing wanda she's probably going to break down and stop fighting <laughs> well like, cuz they they don't, they don't meet in this show right like they, I, and they, yeah they, they don't they don't interact yeah so for what wanda's no from what wanda knows vision's gone for good so imagine she just sees him now yeah, I'm sure that's gonna happen. But this vision also ends the show. Like the white vision ends the show, b- slowly becoming the main vision. So maybe the next time we see him, he'll just be Vision. You know? Yeah. So, uh, in the last episode, vis- the fake Vision and white Vision have this battle of wits. Pr- kind of. It's really. It's. It's actually a really cool scene. Like their conversation is really awesome. Uh, and then it, white. It is. But then, I, but then I'm a meme ruined it. Oh yeah, <laughs> uh, and then the white vision pretty much like comes to his senses because the the uh, fake vision tells him like he's a real being and he has thoughts and all that stuff, and then he flies away and uh, that's the last time we see him in the show, but definitely not the last time we're gonna see him in the MCU. Yeah, I'm sure he'll be back at some point to to be like Red Tornado, just be like the the, the maid. Or like the the temporary leader of the Young Avengers when they formed, yeah. Because that's clearly where the MCU is headed, right? Yeah, I mean, look, K- I mean, Kate Bishop, Kate Bishop, um, what's it? What's Spider Man, yeah, Spider Man, uh, Tony's daughter, Iron Heart is gonna be a show, yeah. She Hulk is, I mean, She Hulk's not young, but She Hulk is gonna become a thing. They're clearly replacing the Avengers with with new versions, you know. So. Also, uh, there's a weird thing. Spoilers for the end of Shang Chi. Uh, somewhere, some t- somewhere after, be- before the between Endgame and Shang Chi, Bruce Banner is not Professor Hulk anymore. I thought that yes, was but, I thought that was going to be the permanent thing. Yeah, but then in She Hulk, the show, he's still Professor Hulk. Okay, so it takes place before oh. Shang Chi. Then well, we don't we don't know. We have no idea. Like, does he just when he hulks out? Does he just hulk out like normal? But he has Bruce's brain. <laughs> Probably, and I don't like that. If that's what yeah, that's weird. It, it just removes the the hide that for the Jekyll and Hyde, right? If he's still just smart as the Hulk, it's weird. I I don't know what I don't know how they're gonna take that. But that was off topic. Anyways, okay, let's talk about the last two episodes because I don't like it. I just said turn out there. I don't like I don't like these episodes. I don't uh, like them either. They're... I think they're generic MCU garbage that I don't like. Uh, Agnes, turns out her real name is Agatha 
Hark- Harkness, right? Harkins? Harkness? Harkness, yeah. Just... Ag- Agatha Harkness. She's a witch! A witch! Yeah, she, she's a witch from Salem, basically. Yeah, so, yeah, so uh, yeah, Salem actually happened in the MCU, and there were actual witches, witches, and she was one of said witches, and she was drawn to Westview because she, like, felt Wanda's power, and Wanda, if you didn't know, is the Scarlet Witch, which is, in lore, the most powerful witch to ever exist. So yeah, she's she's the most powerful magic user, bar the Sorcerer Supreme. So Agatha is trying to absorb her power because that's what she's been doing. She's been going to all the witches and absorb, killing and absorbing their power, kind of like what Pat thinks is gonna happen in the new Spider Verse. Yes. <laughs> so you'll have to watch last last week's episode to yeah. get context on that. You want to learn about Morlun? You're gonna have to watch. Uh... You have to watch the last episode. Pat cut out when he said that, but that's what he said. Yeah, we're still we're still trying to figure out the new mics, by the way. So, so bear with us here. Oh yeah, yeah. I said it in the last episode, and this is episode two of new audio setup. Yeah, I <laughs> I, I I already sound different. I tinkered with the settings a bit. We're gonna see how this sounds. <laughs> we should have said that at the beginning, but anyways. So after this twist, uh, it plays this really good theme song called uh, Agatha All Along. It won an Emmy. That song won an en- Emmy. So that's interesting. Uh, oh, something we forgot to mention. Every single episode has its own opening for, for, the, like, for the theme song for WandaVision. And they're all like based on the era well, that the TV yeah. world was in. And, and yeah. that, that's pretty cool. It's one of my favorite little details of the show. So Agatha has uh, this big jazzy thing about how it's been Agatha all along. Agatha's been pulling the strings. She was the one that projected the, the fake uh, the fake Quicksilver, and she was the one who was uh, like hiding everything from Wanda and all that shit. And after and, uh, that reveal is when the you, show you, became bad. Do you like the song? Do I like the... Yeah, I, th- I like the song. Because I don't like the song. You don't Maybe like the I'm song? just bitter. Maybe I'm just bitter. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't like the song. Maybe I'm biased. But um, I like this song. It's pretty good. Yeah, I, I don't like this twist. I don't really care about Agatha as a character. She's getting a show, by the way. So I, I guess I'm going to have to yeah, learn she, to like She's her. getting a show, which is a prequel to this. Because, spoiler alert, she dies. <laughs> Well, she doesn't. She doesn't die. She's like her memories are erased, and she's forced to live in Westview forever. Oh, okay. Well, well, well. She's written out. I should have said. <laughs> yeah. So that show is going to be a prequel. But I'm going to be completely honest with you. I, I have zero interest in Agatha's backstory. Uh, same. I, I can't think of a single thing that would that would benefit this show from that. So whatever. The Agatha twist. After that, the stuff about. WandaVision being a sitcom and everything's just thrown out the window for the last two episodes because it just becomes, like Pat said before, MCU garbage. Uh, And then in the last episode, Wanda and Agatha have this really bad CG battle. Yeah, they have this generic final CG final battle in super. That's that's like a standard in superhero movies now. But like I just. Because WandaVision started off so, like, interesting and unique, by the time we get to this point of the show, I, I was just so disappointed and bored, you know? Yeah, it, it's kind of like what happened... It's kind of like how it felt with Loki as well. Um, but we're, we're, we're yeah. going to get to that. Uh, we're planning on doing all the MCU shows, so stick around, and you'll hear us talk about not only Loki, but also the Falcon and the Winter Soldier, and Hawkeye, and maybe What If. Not you know, sure about What If. Is- you know, you know it's funny, like like side tangent. I mean, you can keep this in. I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> While we were making the schedule. Yeah. I completely forgot about what if. <laughs> like 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 I like we we made plans to do Falcon and Winter Soldier and and Loki and, and, Hawkeye. and Hawkeye, and I completely forgot about what if. And if that isn't the perfect review for, on my end for what if, I don't know what is. Okay, you know what? Here, look, let's review what if right now. Okay, we have thirty seconds to review what if. It's bad. I haven't finished it. That's my review. I, I, I was so <laughs> bad. I stopped watching. <laughs> I finished it and it's bad. Yeah. <laughs> the only good episode is the second one. <laughs> the one with Thanos being a good guy. That's the only interesting episode. 
the, the Marvel Zombies episode genuinely upset me, and that's the one that's being spun off Same. into its own show. Oh, yeah, that, uh, yeah, the, the, there's going to be a Marvel Zombies show. Isn't that great? I just, I really hope it doesn't continue off to what if episode, and it's actually the, the proper Marvel Zombies. Yeah, I hope they just the straight comics. up adapt the comic. But, like, less, less dark and... and dramatic obviously yeah because it's mcu and they're too scared you can't have uh kids are watching this man you can't have peter parker killing and eating at me you know yeah anyway wandavision (laughs) yeah so back so that that's our review of what if uh two two stars no not even one star i'd probably give it a two but i haven't finished it the last episode of wandavision is definitely the worst one uh the second to last one a lot of it happens like a lot of it is just agatha bringing wanda back in time just to for some reason just to show her why she's powerful or whatever and there's this book forgot what it's called i'm just gonna call it the necronomicon because that's what it that's what it's just the magic book of prophecies yeah it's the magic book of prophecies and it says that the scarlet witch is gonna end the world or whatever right basically that like Uh, she's too powerful and she has to be like stopped what ends up happening, obviously, Wanda wins the fight against Agatha, and then Wanda absorbs Agatha's powers, and Wanda's like, I promise I'll never read the book. I'm not gonna be evil. She reads it at the end. And then she attacks evil? the that camera. Was... <laughs> yeah, but I mean, we'll, we'll, we'll find out what happens there in, in Doctor Strange 2. I mean, she's 100% a villain now. Like eh, a... we don't we'll, we'll see we'll see i don't know like i i don't think there's any question that she's gonna be a villain i i don't think she's a villain but i think she is going to be responsible for what's happening in dr strange 2 well that in combination with no way home right yeah she I, i'm pretty sure she's gonna be in the mid credit scene for no way home whatever it ends up being i'm pretty sure the mid credit scene is gonna have the teaser for multiverse of madness and you know, No Way Home is supposed to lead directly into Multiverse of Madness, so we'll see what happens there. Oh yeah, yeah for sure. Like, well, like wherever Doctor Strange ends off in No Way Home, it's gonna lead directly into Multiverse of Madness. And but One Division is in it. I want. I mean, Wanda is in it. No Wanda. Yeah. So like, I we we mentioned this before, but before you watch Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness, you you obviously have to watch the first Doctor Strange. But the three main things are Loki, One Division, and No Way Home. So we'll we'll see how how that fits in. Loki obviously because of the multiverse, No Way Home because of the shit that happens in the movie, and WandaVision because Wanda reads the book. So, we'll, have, well, I'll I'll have more to say about that in a week maybe or two weeks. Yeah, when the No Way Home comes out, I'm probably gonna watch. I'm probably just gonna suck up and watch the cam rip. Probably. <laughs> Hopefully, you can find a good quality one that doesn't ruin the the movie experience for you. Yeah, but with that being said, um. We we went through every episode. We talked about all the characters. That's pretty much it. So, yeah, WandaVision is a really good show if you only watch the first three episodes. Yeah, we, we've both said this a lot, but I feel like if WandaVision stuck its landing a little bit better, uh, I'd like it more. The ending is also just really weird. Like, the, the final battle happens and she absorbs Agnes' powers, right? And then she just kind of leaves. Like, she, she gets no proper repercussions for her actions. And, like, the military invades Westview in the end, and then they try to arrest her, but then... Um, what's her name from this from the Marvels? I don't remember the character's name. Monica. Monica's like, she oh gets no, her powers. She's, she was grieving, you can't blame her. But, like, yeah, you can. And, and all the villagers still hate her, uh, but Wanda just kind of leaves, and lives in isolation with her book. Yeah, she she lives in like a cabin in the woods, and like there's like the after credit scene is like she's in the cabin in the woods, and she's like drinking tea or whatever. You go inside the house, uh oh, she's evil and she's reading the book. Like, I, don't know. I, I wish like the last two episodes I just don't like. No, they're not I think good. If the show, if the show handled its its dealing with grief thing better, I'd like the show more. But overall, just it really fails to stick the landing with me. It is good teaser bait for future MCU projects. There's that. Yeah, so it's very disappointing how the show ended, but that beginning is unmatched. I don't think I'm ever going to watch anything that's quite like that. It's definitely very unique for uh, for Marvel. Yeah. 
I, I would I would watch I would watch an entire show like that. I mean, I mean that's pretty much the Twilight Zone. Well, so. Yeah, I was gonna say like it exists. It's called the Twilight Zone. <laughs> Which the whole show is basically referencing. Yeah, the, but... yeah. The, we we did we didn't mention that the entire show is basically the Twilight Zone or Black Mirror. So, you know, the MCU, in my opinion, has a bit of a problem with playing things safe, and I know all these movies kind of bleeding together. Um, but I mean, th- this this intro just felt very fun and unique, and I hope we get more of that. Yeah. So so far, Hawkeye is looking like a really really good show. A new episode came out today at the time of recording. Haven't seen it yet. We're probably gonna watch it later yeah maybe i really like hawkeye feels good yeah die hard is really great (laughs) maybe we'll have more to say about that oh maybe maybe we will Mm. but with that being said uh we're gonna get ready to move on to backlogged not hot off the presses so when we talk about tv shows because they're very different and we review them very differently we're going to skip hot off the presses. Also because we recorded the last episode three days ago. <laughs> yep. Not, not much has happened in the past three days. Yeah. Um, there's, been some, there's been some No Way Home interviews that have uh, excited me. Well, other than that, I, that's I, it. <laughs> I guess that uh, and I can, can talk about that off camera. Yeah. Yeah. Other than, other than that, um, let's talk cinema, but actually cinema this time. Yeah. So let's move on to Backlogged, the segment where we recommend each other movies and then use those movies to talk about, uh, use those movies to review for the next episode after that. Uh, so Pat, why don't you go ahead? Last, so two episodes ago, I recommended Live By. Anime Garbage. AKA, it's a saw five, 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 five. So in exchange, he recommended me Anime Garbage. <laughs> uh, no, I, he recommended me Professor Layton and the Eternal Diva. Yes. I had never seen this. The only this is based on a video game. I had played the 3DS Professor Layton game. I might have played the first game as well. I don't remember. It's been a long time. Mm-hmm. My my R four days were a long time ago. Oh my god, R four. Yeah, I remember, remember that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so, um, Professor Layton, the Eternal Diva, based on the Professor Layton series. It's basically Sherlock Holmes, but video game. Yeah. And um, for people who know me in my personal life. I love Sherlock Holmes. Specifically, I love House MD. <laughs> uh, which is basically Sherlock Holmes. But a hospital. But a hospital. It's a medical drama instead of a mystery drama. But it's about solving mystery. But yeah, so I went into this a little excited. Because I like mystery stuff. I liked the 3DS game enough. Yeah, and it's not long. So I figured, why not? It'd be fun to put on the background. And I gave it a 3.5 out of 5. 7 out of 10. Nice. I had fun with this. Um, best video game adaptation? I, I don't know. I don't think so. I think this is also kind of cheating because it's it's made by the creators of the game. <laughs> so yeah, it's kind of cheating. It's not really an adaptation, but um, I I enjoyed it. I thought it was fun. I made a joke on Letterbox that this is my favorite episode of Sherlock, <laughs> a show that I have not finished. <laughs> Ironically, for someone who's calls himself a Sherlock Holmes fan. Have it finished the, arguably the the most popular Sherlock Holmes adaptation, but yeah, I um I enjoyed this. Thought it was fun. I thought the voice, I watched the English dub. Okay. Uh, I would assume there's a Japanese dub. I had, I I haven't heard it. Yes, there's a Japanese version. Yeah. I I I heard the English dub. I th- I thought the English dub was was fine. Uh, is it the same actors from the games? Most of the most of the voices from the from the English dub of this movie are the voices of the characters. From the U.S. versions of the game, but as for the other characters, they got other voice actors, and I know some of them kind of didn't sound great. <laughs> yeah, that's. Uh, I I I I would rather they like something that really 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 bothers me about the like the Hedgehog two voice acting situation. Yeah, is Sonic and Knuckles aren't voiced by their game voice actors, but Tails is, and it's just really weird. Yeah, that's <laughs> weird. Uh, so, like, so like, given the opportunity, I like when they give actual voice actors the chance to voice their characters in big budget films. <laughs> Something Charles Martinet should have been doing for the Mario movie, but that's <laughs> a different conversation, right? Right. But yeah, I, I like this. Um, maybe I'll go back and replay the games because I have this under my belt now. I thought it was fun. Yeah, this this is this is uh my favorite anime. <laughs> Not a long I've list heard- of animes I've yeah. seen. 
I feel like if I did play all the games or I had some kind of background with this franchise, I'd like this movie more. So maybe that's something I'll go back and do now. But yeah, I, I, if you're a fan of the game, I'd recommend this. That was a fun time. Yeah, one one of my favorite things about this movie is they did actually find a way to implement the puzzles into the movie. They did it in a weird way, but they found a way. Yeah, and, you know, and, and any kind of accuracy is, is good in my book. Yeah, so really, really good movie on its own. Uh, amazing movie if you're a huge fan of the series. And also, if you just like early 2000s anime, this is a pr pretty good one. Uh, I gave it 4 out of 5. Now it's my turn to recommend you a movie. Yeah. This one's going to be interesting. I think this is a, a podcast first. Where I'm recommending you a movie I also haven't seen. Yeah, but, it's, but it's a movie that I wanted to see for the longest time. Technically not and a recommendation, but a suggestion. A suggestion. <laughs> a suggestion station. Um. <laughs> Yeah, so it's a movie I've been putting off for a very long time, and I keep hearing phenomenal things about it. But I uh, I haven't gone around to it, and I really want to. I saw it on your watch list, and I'm like, you know what? You should watch it, and I should watch it. So we're going to watch it. It's a Whiplash. Whiplash! Oh my god. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, know, I know people who put this on their top 10 movies ever made list. Um, I have two friends of mine who say this is their favorite movie ever made. So I'm excited. I really want to watch this. J.K. Simmons is the teacher. <laughs> yeah. Um, heads up, though, a similar situation to La La Land, where depending on how we feel, we might come back and revisit this as, as a full episode. Yeah, we 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 will might. see how that goes next week. But yeah. Well, wow, okay. So that's that is a that's an interesting one. Okay. Oh, I can't wait to watch this. Same. Well, uh, should we reveal what we're doing next week? Uh, yeah. Um, Let's do it. So, um, my co-host, what are we reviewing next week? So, next week, we're doing a very special Christmas episode. Because that ep that this episode is coming out on the 16th. If all goes well, it should go well, because you know, this is a week in advance. So, <laughs> so, the episode after this is coming out on the 23rd. So, it'll be the day before Christmas Eve. So, we're gonna do, um, two Christmas episodes. We're going to do one yeah. next week, and we're going to do one the week after that. The first one is going to be on my favorite Christmas movie, and the second one is going to be on Pat's favorite Christmas movie. Yep. So, next week, we're going to be reviewing Elf, <laughs> starring Will the Ferrell. Caster. The Caster. You'll have to watch the next episode of my out. Mmm. What's my Christmas movie? Who knows? You might already know it. Listen to the podcast to find out. <laughs> Yes, sir. Where can you listen to the podcast? Everywhere. Everywhere is the answer. You could watch us on the Jazz Walkers YouTube channel. That you can watch us on our YouTube channel. That too. On Spotify, on Apple Music, yeah. and a bunch more places that are on our link tree, where you can also find our Letterboxd accounts, our social media profiles, and a bunch of other nice things. Uh, mainly, you will find... Uh, Google fo Google uh, form that you could fill out to recommend us a movie or TV show. Now that you've seen how we review TV shows, maybe you'll want to recommend us and give us something to binge. It's been a while since I've actually like binged the show back to back. So, yep. Just uh, for future reference on TV shows, if you recommend us something like The Office that has nine seasons, <laughs> we're not going to be reviewing the whole show in one go. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And and also, if you want us to. If you think we've already seen it, you could also recommend a specific season if you want. If you want us to recommend it, uh, to to review a specific season, like say we both seen BoJack Horseman, my favorite season of BoJack Horseman is season four. So maybe you could be like, re review season four, fill out that form, recommend us a show or movie, and we'll watch it, and then maybe review it for an episode of the podcast. And make sure another thing to join us. On the second annual Disaster Party live stream for the charity Stand Up to Cancer that's happening on twitch.tv slash Toonman Live on the 19th of December 2021 at 11 a.m. Eastern Time. It's going to be it's going to be a six hour long stream. We're going to have some prizes. We're going to have some guests. Uh, we're going to just be having a lot of fun and raising money for a really good cause to children and adults. Who need it most? So remember, December 19th at 11 a.m. Eastern Time, twitch.tv slash Live charity stream for Stand Up to Cancer. 
And thank you, everybody, so much for listening to this episode of the podcast. We'll see you all next week in a theater near you. Good night, everyone. Good night.